Welcome everyone to this service of Advent worship and it's lovely once again to join with you at the service of worship today. Now wherever you're joining us, either online from further afield or from closer to hand in one of our three villages and village churches, Winscombe, Sandford or Churchill, you're more than welcome. It's lovely to have your company as we worship God together. Now this service for today is our Advent service liturgy. Uh, it's a new liturgy and you can find it on our website which is www.winsandchurches.org.uk. Please do download a copy of that and join in with the responses. For now let's gather ourselves in a moment of quiet and we'll begin with the words of welcome. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. And as you can see, we have our wonderful Advent wreath. We've got two candles already lit. That must mean it's Advent 3, third Sunday in Advent. So I'm going to light the third candle now. And there are some words to say together for this third Sunday of Advent. Lord Jesus, light of the world, John told the people to prepare, for you were very near. As Christmas grows closer day by day, help us to be ready to welcome you. Amen. And talking about welcoming you, we have this time of confession now where it's our moment where we can welcome God afresh into the dark corners of our hearts and our lives and ask him for his uh, forgiveness and generosity. Please do join me in the words of the confession and the responses that you see on page three of your service books. Lord Jesus Christ, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, have mercy. And we respond, Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for all your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And now we have the collect for today, the third Sunday of Advent. Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare the way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your many mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, and that at your second coming to judge the world we may be found an acceptable people in your sight, for you are alive and reign forevermore with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Following on from our collect, we have the reading from God's Word, and today it's read to us by Derek. Thank you, Derek. The Gospel reading is taken from John chapter 1, verses 6 to 8 and 19 to 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, No, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out from the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, 
They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Amongst you stands one whom you do not know, the one who comes after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptising. Well, after that reading, our first hymn anticipates the birth of Christ, God incarnate, God with us. This hymn is Emmanuel.
you, Martin, Chris and Claire, for that wonderful hymn. Well, many years ago, I found myself in court. Yes, believe it or not, I was in court, uh, not up before the judge actually set, sat with the judge on voluntary work experience. This was a long time ago, pre-university. And one of the cases involved theft from a vending machine pub, vending machine in a nightclub. And this particular vending machine was up a flight of stairs on a landing and it had been broken into and the cash stolen. The defendant claimed he didn't do it, but there were so many people in the club, how could anybody know who it really was? They were all milling around and pressing in. This was obviously many years before social distancing. All remained unclear until a witness was called, the nightclub bouncer. The bouncer explained that upstairs had been cordoned off for repairs and was dark, and that he'd followed the defendant up the stairs only to find him kicking at the vending machine with some vigour to get at the cash. The case was a lot clearer at that point. But the point I'm making is this. A witness's evidence can be crucial in determining the truth. And in our Bible passage today, we also come across a man who's called to witness and testify to the truth. We saw last week how the Jews around Jerusalem were all astir following the arrival of a new prophet after a gap of many centuries without prophetic ministry. So they were really excited about it, about who this person was. It was, of course, John the Baptist, and the Jewish leaders want to find out the truth about him. So what do they do? They bring him in for questioning. They're pretty blunt, they cut to the chase. They ask him, is he Elijah or maybe Isaiah, one of their ancient prophets returned? You can see that in verse 20. And John is equally direct in his response. He tells them he is neither Elijah nor Isaiah. That's verse 21. Who are you then? The leaders demand. Is he the Messiah, the one they've long hoped for? They're searching for the truth and asking John to be a witness. Now, in the nightclub vending machine case, the witness's testimony was crucial in determining the truth. And it seems to me the truth is a sort of light that illuminates that which is grey and dark and helps us to see things as they really are. Clearly, John the Baptist is charismatic. He preaches a message of challenge and of hope, and he does things that remind the people of their great prophets from many years ago. So is John the Messiah then? If you watch online streaming, Perhaps through Netflix. Netflix, Netflix has a, a fascinating fictional drama on at the moment called Messiah. And it explores what it would be like if a Messiah-like figure appeared in modern day. It's fictional, it's a drama, it's a thriller. In the series, a CIA agent relentlessly pursues the truth about a man who initially leads Muslim res refugees. They call him Imam. He leads them to freedom. And this Imam also miraculously heals a Jewish boy on the steps of the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. Then he suddenly appears in America to work alongside a pastor of an impoverished Baptist church whilst shunning a TV megachurch. Is he the Messiah for all faiths? What is the truth about him? It really is a fascinating reimagining of what it might be like if a messiah figure came in our modern times, and perhaps not unlike the feelings that existed around the time of John and the advent of Jesus Christ. They needed to know the truth. They were longing for the truth. But the truth, I think, whilst, whilst liberating, can also be disconcerting. Winston Churchill once said, men occasionally stumble over the truth, but most of them pick themselves up, hurry off and go along as if nothing ever happened. 
The issue is this, once we know the truth, what are we going to do about it? And it is exactly that situation that the Jewish leaders and the Jewish people find themselves in. Because verse 20, John the Baptist is clear. He tells them, I am not the Christ. He is not the Messiah. He goes on to tell them, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. I baptise you with water, but he who is to come, I am not worthy even to untie his sandals. That's verse 27. Now, a disciple wouldn't untie the sandals of their teacher. It would be a servant in Bible times. Old Testament prophets consider themselves servants of God. But John is saying he's not even worthy of being the Messiah's servant. So, where does this leave us on Advent Sunday, the third of Advent? Well, in our season of Advent, and through this reading from John's Gospel we've had today, we're reminded of two aspects of our role as Christ's followers. The first aspect is to be witnesses to the truth. John's Gospel has the word witness in it 47 times, compared to about five or six in Matthew, Mark and Luke all put together. So being a witness is something that's very, cle very clearly important for John the Gospel writer and John the Baptist. They are two different people, but confusingly they have the same name. Verse 5 tells us John the Baptist came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that all through him might believe. Because the truth, as Jesus once said, will set us free. Jesus also told his followers, you are my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and to the ends of the earth. That's Acts chapter 1, verse 8. So, we must be ready always to give a reason for our faith when asked by a family member, a friend, a work colleague, a neighbour, to speak about the hope we've been given that is in our hearts. Sometimes this might mean even that we're persecuted for our faith as this week's Beatitudes study prompted us to consider. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And so we must pray for our Christian brothers and sisters in other countries who speak the truth and are persecuted for doing so. The second aspect we see through John's example is the need for humility. In a world where many never miss an opportunity to shout about their achievements or pursue celebrity or status or wealth, we see through John's example that in God's kingdom, the first will be last and the last will be first. And at a time when many remain deeply sceptical about the church as an institution, it seems to me both humility and witness have an important part to play because together, I think they mean we need to preach less and live out more practically what it means to love, even when the temptation through the pandemic is to focus primarily inwards on ourselves and our own needs first. But through the COVID pandemic, we've seen so many wonderful examples of what a faithful Christian witness can look like, all without words. So humility, and being without words is itself a form of witness because it's so countercultural. It offers a contrast with the celebrity seeking culture and a culture of many words. It points to a greater truth, which is the coming of our hope, the real Messiah, at Christmas time in the birth of Jesus. Amen. And we return to our service booklets to proclaim our faith together in the words of the Creed. So we say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
William is now going to lead us in a time of prayer. We thank you for those who have been teachers in the School of Christ. Give understanding to those who study the faith that the Church has handed on and clarity to those who communicate the Gospel in a changing world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those who have been shepherds of all your people. Give a pastoral heart to deacons, priests and bishops and the needful gifts to all your people in their ministry. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those who have lived out their vocation in family life. Give your grace to all who nurture children and all who care for the sick. On this day we remember especially Bishop Peter, Jeff Norton, Dennis Cutmore, Sarah B, James, Henry S, Celia Hine, Chris G, Pauline K, Reverend Tim Jessamine and his wife Elaine, David, Mary Lee, Jackie Bravery, Jim McGough, Clive Litster, Mara Burrows, Pat Gray, Pippa Cobden Ramsey, Katie Brookman, Russ A and Ken Martin. Enfold your love around all your sons and daughters. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for those who have brought holiness through the medicine of the gospel. Give skill to all who minister healing and reconciliation in your name and comfort all who cry out to you from any sort of distress. Today we especially pray for those who are working hard to deliver the new Covid vaccine. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you for the noble army of martyrs by the shedding of whose blood the Church has been enriched. Keep under your protection those who are persecuted for the cause of Christ and acknowledge, we pray, those who have passed through death trusting your promises. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Hasten, Lord, the day when people will come from east and west, from north and south, and sit at your table in your kingdom, and we shall see your Son in his glory. Amen. And our prayers conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Let's join in with the words together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn fits beautifully with this theme of longing for the truth, longing for the Messiah, both in John's time and in ours today. It's a beautiful song of worship sung for us by Claire with Martin and Chris. It's as the deer pants for the water. Oh
Well, we've come to the end of our service today. Thank you so much for joining us. Please do see lots of uh, exciting services that we've got online, lots of activities, our advent calendar, all available to get involved with from, if it doesn't matter whether you're nearby or further afield. Please do have a look at those. And a very big thank you to our musicians and singers, Martin, Chris, and Claire, who produced the music for today, William for doing the prayers, Derek for the reading, and of course, Joe and Derek for their skills in keeping me straight on the digital recording of the service and publication. So thank you, everyone. Let's finish with the blessing. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in the knowledge of Christ our Lord, the child who came at Christmas time. The blessing of God our Father, Son, Holy Spirit, be upon you all in Jesus' name.